I'm Jillian from the Center for Academic Communication. This workshop is about building a good paragraph. We'll talk about what makes a paragraph unified, cohesive, and coherent, and identify ways to fix a few common problems. Imagine that you have pieces of a puzzle that make up your essay topic. These pieces all fit together perfectly in your head, but you need to make sure they'll fit together and make sense for your reader too. Strong paragraph structure can help you achieve that kind of clarity. How can it do that? Well, on a basic level, each paragraph should contain only one main idea, which is expressed in a clear topic sentence. Most readers with English as a first language are used to finding a paragraph's topic at the beginning of a paragraph. If we don't find it there, we'll be confused. Paragraphs are usually about five to eight sentences long in most types of academic writing, so you'll have a topic sentence plus about four to seven additional sentences. All the other sentences in the paragraph should support that topic sentence in some way. These sentences might define a concept, provide evidence for a claim, or explain or further analyze an idea or a quotation. Finally, the last sentence of the paragraph should tie up the package and perhaps give a nod back to the claim you made in your thesis statement or forward to where you're headed in the next paragraph. This sample body paragraph is from an essay on the growing acceptance of world Englishes. The topic sentence claims that perceptions of competency in a second or additional language have changed. You can imagine that the previous paragraph might have defined the concept of competency or proficiency. Here, the second sentence further explains the topic by quoting an expert who claims that the inner circle has lost much of its linguistic power. Now the reader might be wondering what inner circle means, so the third sentence defines it as countries where English is the primary language. The fourth and fifth sentences expand the definition by defining what outer and expanding circles are and by analyzing the previous claims in terms of their implications for how competency and proficiency in a language are defined. Finally, the last sentence ends with another quotation from Jeremy Harmer about linguistic power and ownership. It also analyzes the quotation in relation to the perspective shift mentioned in the topic sentence and transitions to the next paragraph, which, as you can probably guess, explains and gives examples of the concept of world Englishes. Seems easy, right? What could possibly go wrong? One very common problem with paragraphs is that they can sound too much like a shopping list. This sometimes happens if you rely too heavily on others' ideas and just list them off one by one, or you're giving examples or details without showing how they fit together. The second problem is disorientation. The reader gets lost and suddenly realizes that they don't know where they are or where they're headed next. This can happen when one of the pieces of the puzzle doesn't fit in in a way that a reader can easily understand. Maybe you've switched topics too abruptly, or you've included details that don't fit the topic sentence. As you progress through your paragraph, you'll need to use transitional words and phrases like however and for example. There are lots of good options for making these connections like the ones in our resource on transitions. So how can you detect problems within your paragraphs? First, check your work by reading only the thesis statement and topic sentences. It should kind of make sense. Next, imagine if you cut the paragraph up into sentences and scrambled them up. Could someone else put them back together in the right order fairly easily? Finally, have you covered everything you set out to cover at the beginning? Did you mention anything in the topic sentence that you didn't end up discussing? Or did you discuss anything that your topic sentence didn't say you were going to cover? This concludes the Strong Paragraph Party. Thanks for learning. To learn more tips and tricks to help improve your academic communication skills, visit the University of Victoria Centre for Academic Communication website for workshops and other resources. You can also book an appointment with one of our tutors by clicking the link in the description below. Good luck, and see you soon!